Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some concerning news. If you're like me and you own a ledger, you probably woke up to this nice little email that says, hey, uh, all your data uh, has been compromised. And originally this went out to 9,500 people around July of this year. But uh, there has been a dump on a major site, which is actually exposing 270,000 people's information and not just emails. We're talking first names, last names, addresses, phone numbers, the whole shebang. So really, what does it come down to? Well, it comes down to there's a lot of things. There were some missteps taken. But the most important thing is, what does that mean for you going forward? What is the company ledger going to do? How are they going to fix this? And what does this all mean in the grand scheme of security? So I'm going to take you down a little bit of a rabbit hole right now. And I'm going to show you where we, what happened before, where we are now, and what's about to happen in the future. So let's jump in the computer and I'll explain everything. So here's the email I am talking about. You may have seen it, you may have not. We're going to go over this in a little bit of detail and then talk about what this all means. Also, I reached out to Ledger to ask them if they would like to be on the show and rebut some of these comments. But as of right now, uh, 11 a.m. on December 21st, 2020, I have not gotten a response yet. I'm sure they're busy. So this is what it states. There was a dump of the content of a Ledger customer database on Raid Forum. And we'll get into that in a bit. But in July, we engaged an external security organization to conduct a forensic review of the logs available. This review of the logs enabled us to confirm that approximately 1 million email addresses had been stolen, as well as 9,500 plus detail information, like the address name, surname, and phone number. So this is important because what we're talking about here is that they sent out emails. I remember this email in July. It said, hey, we were hacked, and there's a lot of email addresses that had gone away. So again, I didn't think too much of it because their emails and uh, mine have been compromised so many times because I've had an email forever, so who cares? But it, it goes beyond that because of addresses, names, and phone numbers. So approximately 272,000 detailed information, such as address, last name, phone numbers, uh, of our customers were leaked onto this website. These details are not or were not available in the logs that we were able to analyze. So this is what they're saying. They're saying we didn't notify everybody because we didn't know exactly about it because we, we did a um, summary of these logs or took a look at these logs and it didn't appear that they were compromised. However, they were and now all the information is out there, which is a little scary. We'll get into that in a bit. So it states, if you are part of the detailed personal information subset, you will receive a specific email notifying within 24 hours. So check that out. Data breach is not linked to our hardware wallets. I'm gonna say this again. The data breach is not linked to our hardware wallets, nor Ledger Live Security, and your crypto assets are safe and not in peril of being compromised. So that is the big thing. So the, when I thought about this, I'm like, well, first of all, is my crypto safe? Well, yes, it is safe. It is safe unless you do something goofy, like get a stupid email where they say, hey, give us your 24-word passphrase. It's the same game, my friends. You just ignore that because that is a scam. Any kind of personal information that they want, <laughs> they got enough already. I mean, not to, not to make uh, a joke of it, but it is, if you don't laugh, sometimes you'll just get super ticked off but just keep your information as much as possible safe and not give it to anybody. Don't make it easy for them. And again, Ledger's not gonna ask you for your 24 word passphrase, so don't give it out to anybody. This is what they're doing. We're doing everything possible to make Ledger stronger for the future. They hired a new chief information security officer. So obviously the other one got canned because I mean, who's gonna keep that guy around? They're gonna harden their already strong systems and have thoroughly reviewed our data policy. Well, that's good you reviewed that. Penetration tests and forensic analysis with external security firms to test these and find any additional vulnerabilities on our e-commerce software systems. They're working with law enforcement to prosecute hackers and stop these scammers. They take down, uh, they've already taken down more than 170 phishing websites since the original breach. Customer support is working 24 seven. We're doing everything proactively to deal with this and prevent in the future. So it really comes down to this. How did this all happen? Well, they had some kind of API hooked up for some type of e-commerce database from June 2020 and on. And really what they did was they were transferring information that they were collecting and they were putting it over to this database uh, for them to analyze. And in between those two, this API was hacked and all your information was sent over. But in reality, it doesn't matter how this happened. The big thing is how are they gonna respond? We're gonna get into that in a second. But I, I just wanna warn you on a couple of things. First of all, you're gonna see trash like this where it's gonna be some goofy, uh, email address, no reply at ledger.com, B28 email, blah, 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 blah. That's not even remotely accurate to uh, the actual ledger. And, and they're going to say, hey, something about we need your information. Click right here. Don't click squat. 
Don't click anything. Just go to ledger.com and say, hey, you know, if you, if you don't believe it, actually, I'm not doing anything with Ledger right now because I'm just like, I'm just going to be hands off and I don't want to do anything. And that is it. So if you get something like this, just know that's ridiculous. Also, you're going to get something trash like this. This is what really ticks me off. And you're going to see this again and again and again and again all over Twitter and YouTube and every other place where it's a copy and paste of these internet tough guys. And it's going to start like this. Hello, my name. I have recently become aware of your cryptocurrency holdings. I live in whatever city. I know that you live at blah, blah, blah address because they know your address. I'm not afraid to invade your home. I don't want to make this any harder than it has to be. I'm offering you 500 bucks. Show me much to be considered since the recent pump to leave you alone. If not, I'm not afraid to show up when you least expect it and see how my wrench works against your face or maybe even wait for you to leave your home and take your belongings whilst you're not there to call the police. I'll be waiting for the money and watch until then. And there's like a little wallet address where you can send Bitcoin right there. First of all, there's a lot of internet tough guys out there and they're going to send you all this stuff and they're going to scare people. And this might work for some people, but you're not some people, I hope, because this is ridiculous. First of all, just because they know your address, just because they know, they know you have a ledger, they don't know that you have any money in that ledger. They don't know that you actually have that ledger still. They just know that at some point you bought a ledger. Second of all, what do they even have in that ledger? Do you have 20,000 Bitcoin or do you have a thousand BitTorrent? Come on, it doesn't really matter. Do you think someone's really going to come to your house on the off chance that you had a bunch of, of money in there and then just steal your, steal your ledger that way? Or do you think if there are really thieves out there that can put a wrench to your face, that they wouldn't just go and rob homes anyhow? Also, they don't know you. They don't know what you have in your home. I live in Texas and there's a stand your ground state. So if anybody comes to my home, I am legally authorized to use force to defend my house. So do you really think that someone's going to come to somebody's house with a wrench or whatever and try to rob them in broad daylight when they don't even know the person or know what they have. Maybe a very dumb person. But if they want to find out, that is at their prerogative. I personally do not think that would happen, especially in a state like mine. So if you get something like this, do not fall for it. It is all boisterous and not anywhere near to being a reality. Then here's the FAQ at Ledger. And they talk about, again, the 9,500 personal details and why the logs had said that they analyzed was only 9,500. It was just now they realized that, oh no, there was more to it. Now, wh whichever way you want to believe it is up to you. I would hope not that they didn't, but it is what it is. There's a couple other things down here. Really, again, it's not about what happened. It's about what are we going to do about it? So here's the question. Can the info obtained by the hackers bypass two-factor authentication measures? No. Our e-commerce website doesn't retain the login password information since 2FA is not relevant regarding our security scheme. Indeed, our clients don't have a ledger account. This data breach is a marketing e-commerce data breach concerning email. So it's not like they can get your passphrase from this because you set your passphrase. They don't have a collection of the passphrase. And that is one of the great things about Ledger. They don't keep a record of that. You have that and only you have that. So make sure that it's safe. Scrolling down, it states, what can I do to protect my data moving forward? Again, Ledger will never ask you for 24 phrase. They are not going to ask you for a bunch of personal information. Don't give anybody anything and you should be fine. And lastly, it says, here's a best practices for advanced security measures. And I didn't know about this until I clicked on the link. This is some pretty uh, interesting stuff. There's a thing called a passphrase. It's an optional security feature that you can add on top of your 24 word recovery phrase. It's commonly referred to as the 25th word. How do you find that? Very simple. You're going to go into your nano ledger. You're going to pop it on. You're going to scroll over to settings. You're going to click on that. Then it's going to go down to click on security. And lastly, passphrase, and you can set that up. This is only if you want a more stronger security setting. So this passphrase is an extra word. It's just one more on top of your 25th or 24th word recovery phrase to generate a new seed and unlock a completely new set of accounts. Why is this good? Well, your hardware wallet is initialized with your normal 24 word recovery phrases or phrase and gives you access to your normal set of crypto accounts. Through the security set settings, you can enter your passphrase. The device will compute the resulting seed and give you access to your alternate set of crypto asset accounts. So why is this really good in the long run? If someone compromises your backup, like getting a physical access to it uh, and, and to your uh, passphrases, 
then only your normal accounts are at risk. Your passphrase governed accounts stay safe as long as you haven't written down your passphrase next to your 24 word. So really what's going on is that you can put on uh, like, like uh, again, a thousand BitTorrent or whatever goofy little thing that you have in there for your normal like main account. And then with that 25th passphrase, you can have a whole new complete set of accounts of uh, different cryptocurrency digital assets on there, which if somebody gets access to it, they only think that you just have a thousand BitTorrent on there. And like, well, this sucks. But, you know, behind that, you could have, you know, a thousand Bitcoin on there on your second one, just because that passphrase. And again, it states here, you would, of course, only keep small amounts of crypto in your normal non-passphrase related set of accounts and hold your real crypto holdings on the alternate set of accounts, which is also called behind the passphrase. So why is this great? Well, let's just play devil's advocate. Let's say there's some crazy person out there that comes to your house with a wrench. So they take you down and say, okay, give me your, your uh, passphrase. And you say, okay, here it is. And then, they, and then also they know everything about cryptocurrency, which sure. So then they do all that and like they, they pop it open like, damn it, a thousand bit torrent, this sucks. And they just, you know, that's all they know, right? They don't know about this. Now, if they did, it would be a lot a, a different story. However, I think that's going into the realm of just almost impossibility. So if you really want to be protected, then put your nano ledger plus your passphrases in some place outside your home so they can't get to you. So I will say this. What are you going to do about it? Well, the first thing is that you're knowledgeable. You know exactly that, hey, they don't have my passphrases. That is set in stone. I have that on me. They can't break in. I should be good. The addresses we just talked about, the email and everything else. What I will say is this. In this information, there's no mention of any passwords that were compromised. It just states postal addresses, name, surname, and phone number. However, to be safe, I would start to reset all my passwords on all my different apps and settings and everything else. That's what I've already done. Also, this is bad, but I want to put it in context. This was a great one from CSO Online, the 15 biggest data breaches of the 21st century. I'm just going to go over a couple uh, real quick. Uh, Adobe, I think we've all heard about that one in 2013. Nearly 3 million customer credit card records plus login data for a ton of different accounts. That's bad. If that happened to me, man, I'd be pretty ticked off because then I have to order a new credit card, then I have to purge all the different um, transactions that were made, then I have to go and reset all the different things on my credit card because of all the different uh, uh, reoccurring payments I have. God, that would suck. Adult Friend Finder, uh, stolen data span 20 years on six databases, includes names, email address, and passwords. So imagine that being put out there for everybody to see. Canva, email address, username, name, cities of residence, and salted and hashed with BitCrypt or BCrypt passwords. eBay, 145 million users, name, address, date of birth, and encrypted passwords. Equifax, this is the big one. This is in America, 2017. On September 7th, uh, vulnerability in their websites led to a data breach that exposed 147 million customers. Personal information, including social security numbers, birthdays, addresses, in some case, driver's license numbers. Man, that's awful. Dub Smash, same type of thing. Keep going down. Marriott International, contact information, passport number guest numbers, travel information, other personal info, and on and on and on. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but you get my point right here, right? Data breaches are a problem. These are problems. The only thing that really matters is how you respond to it. And when I take you down memory lane, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this. I was not that old uh, in 1982, but this was an actual horrible story. I remember this from my, some of my business classes. There was an incident in 1982 where some whack job was taking cyanide pills and he was putting it into Tylenol bottles and people died from it. And it wasn't that Tylenol was responsible for this, but it was how they acted. So what in 1982, seven people in the Chicago area died. Copycat attacks around the country caused several more deaths. Deaths. This was uh, from Johnson & Johnson, the big uh, pharmaceutical company. And they stated, this was the CEO, we're never going to be judged by what caused the problem. We're going to be judged on how we responded to it. And again, Trust is a currency you cannot buy. And when you lose trust, you lose everything. And that is a problem for a big business like Tylenol, like Equifax, like Adobe, and like Ledger. Once that goes away, I don't care how great your marketing is, it's very tough to get back. And I'm just waiting to see exactly what they do. Now they said that they're gonna do a bunch of things, but really in all honesty, We'll see if that's going to be enough. But this is what happened. In the Tylenol case, Mary Kellerman became the first victim on the, on the morning of September 29th, only 12 years old. 
Then a couple more people died and the same type of thing just happened as like a big chain event. It was just awful. But this was how I was handled. Six weeks after the crisis flared, and this was, man, this is a nation, this is a global brand. The company offered a solution. They made that new bottle with safety elements now that everybody knows about, which is there's cotton, there's foil, there's a seal, childproof cap, plastic strip, everything that would make you say, oh, this hasn't been tampered with. And this is exactly what happened. This is what they do. And this is why we have it to, uh, until today, because the company stepped up and goes, you know what? I don't know what happened here. I don't know what crazy loon is out there, but we're going to make sure this doesn't happen again. And that is really all you can do. So I'm reaching out to Ledger and I'm hoping they're actually going to do these things. But again, it's not what was done. It's how you handle it. And I think that everything that we have talked about here today should keep you safe. All right, let's jump out. All right, so I hope that helped. Look, um, there's a lot of bad actors out there. There's a lot of misinformation. So if you can just take this with a grain of salt and just take a look about, okay, what can I do? It's not about being powerless. It's about taking that power back and going, okay, I know exactly what happened. I know now the steps to take. I know what to do in the future so this doesn't affect me and my family. And that is when the realization is, okay, I can handle anything. So that's really it. So let me know what you think in the comments section and uh, good luck to you. I think it'll be okay.